right, for a call of public works being in order, it's 5.30. I'll do a quick roll call. Uh, myself, Alderperson Decker's here. Alderperson Heideman. Here. Alderperson Ramey. Here. Alderperson Ruff. Here. Alderperson Salazar. Here. Okay, we'll start out with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. All right, we got quite a full house here. We got some other people here, so I guess we'll do a quick introduction. Uh, committee members and staff, I'm Dean Decker, chair of the Public Works Committee. I'm an old person from District 6. Uh, Joe Heidemann, uh, District 10. Alderman. Uh, Amanda Salazar, District 3. Uh, Zach Ross, District 8. Alderman and Vice Chair. I'm Angela Ramey, District 5. Rick Nunn, DPW Motor Vehicle. Uh, Ryan Sazman, Department of Public Works. Mike Wallace, Department of Public Works. Jordan Skip, Wastewater Superintendent. Joe Jones, Center Parks and Forestry, DPW. Uh, DPW Street Department, Joel Colston. Here, Aaron, Management Analyst. Caitlin Krieger, Finance Director. Jessica Huss, w, Deputy Finance Director. Heather Burke, DPW Administration. Uh, Rachel Massey, DPW Administration. David Beeble, Director of Public Works. And we have guests here. I have you guests want, here. Do you want to, you want to introduce yourself? Oh, no. um, my name is Tom Van Hiveren. My wife, John Van Hiveren. Okay, great. All righty, we'll go to start out with number five approval of minutes from September 13th and September 27th. I move. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Any discussion on those minutes? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. They are approved. Uh, number six, report of officer by city attorney's office requesting committee approved transfer of Wellwood Cemetery burial plot located at section 16A, grade 341 from Lois Van Haveren. Clickenoy to Deborah B. Faber. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Van Haverins are here okay. for this request. Okay. Um, and as as the report of officer from the city attorney's office indicates, uh, there's there's quite a process to go through the uh, the chain of ownership and and through the attorney's office they were able to find the the, the next in line and that person has no objections to the family taking ownership of this burial plot and it's the recommendation to allow this to occur. It has to come through this committee. Um, it's by ordinance. That's why we, uh, with the cemetery, normally sometimes, you know, most of the cemetery operations are handled internally, but because of this change in the ordinance, we need to bring it to this committee. We don't have any objections. We think this is a great thing. So we're just looking for the committee's approval. Anyone on the committee have any questions? Can approval then? I, I move to approve. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Be opposed? Chair will sign. That is approved then. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Um, yes, I, mm -hmm. I have a different name. I'm going to give it this one. It's, it's yeah, we call her Debbie V, but her name should be Debbie Van Heeren. Favor, so that very good. Right now, we'll we'll make sure it gets. We'll, we will, and okay. we'll make sure it gets recorded properly. Okay. Okay. Thank you, thank you sir. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Welcome. Appreciate All right. All right. We'll move on to number seven then. Resolution number sixty-seven dash twenty-two twenty-three, September nineteenth, twenty twenty-two. Resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to accept the temporary easement for the city to conduct maintenance activities on a drainage swale. Adjacent to 4812 Ferndale Court. Right? Oh, yeah, uh, where the red dot here is on, on the map, that's 4812 Ferndale Court. Okay, that's that's uh, the residence that we're looking for uh, access easement for. Okay. Back in this area here, it's not nearly as green this time of the year. <laughs> there's a there's a drain swale, it drains it just water goes uh, underneath South Business Drive and it goes through here and then it goes to a retention pond down in the corner down here. And there's a, there's a lot of overgrowth in here. It really doesn't flow that well through there. So we need to go in there and clean some of it out. We'll, we'll get a landscaping company in there, our contractor. But in order to get back there, the only way to do it is to go through someone's yard. 
And the best access point is through this Ferndale Court right here. So that's why that, that's where we're getting an easement. This gives the city permission to hire a contractor to go in there. And they'd like to get the easement now because the time to do this work is like in January or February when the ground is nice and froze. That way you're not making a big mess. So that's that's what this easement is all about. Once work is done, the easement goes away. Okay. It's nothing nothing permanent. Has discussion been or any you know, did these people have contacted? Oh, yeah, yeah. These are the ones that, 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 that we're requesting. It. That's why I kind of talked to them. We're using our home for, for access. So, the questions? The motion? I move. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Chair will tie. That is approved. Okay, number eight. Communication number 1-2223, October 3rd, 2022. Communication from James Slickman, Senior Vice President, Associate General Counsel for Advocate Aurora Health, regarding Aurora Sheboygan Medical Center lot line adjustment for the properly commonly known as 2507 North 7th Street, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. All right, Mr. Chairman, this, this request that basically the reason it's coming before you this evening, is city currently has an agreement with Aurora for this eventual demolition and redevelopment of this parcel of the old hospital. Um, as part of that, um, what has happened is this neighbor has talk, been talking with Aurora and is looking, as you can see, the parking is real close to this property okay. and their, their garage is uh, in this area. So they're looking to get you know, an additional 10 feet. And Aurora has no problem with that. We don't have any problem with it, but it's a, it, we'd have to amend basically our agreement to allow it. And that's why we have this communication in front of you this evening and wanting committee's permission to go forward with that, uh, with that change. So that's a recommendation. It's good for the neighbor and it's what, you know, it just helps the overall development of this once uh, this becomes, I'm going the wrong direction. Redeveloped into, you know, residential at some point in the future. Makes sense. That was the time to do it. Right. That was the time to do it. Yep. Any discussion? Okay. Motion. I move. Fix that. Okay. I'll second. Okay. <laughs> Motion made and seconded. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Here both side. That is approved. <laughs> All right, we'll go to number nine, 2023 budget presentation, discussion only. In your budget uh, or in your agenda packet, there are several documents regarding the public works uh, 2023 annual operation operating budget. And overall, um, again, pretty consistent from the last, I would say, uh, three to four years here, we've been remaining fairly flat within the budget. Uh, especially for public works operations. So, you know, we're 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 right around a little over twelve and a half million dollars operations, and of that, um, six point eight is roughly personnel, and that includes salaries, overtime, benefits, health and medical, for instance, and and so forth. So, in the non personnel services budget. Roughly almost around, almost, you know, 5.7 or 5.8, roughly almost 6 million, you could say. So between the two, again, 12 and a half, uh, 12.7 million dollars total. Personnel services is, is slightly up, about 3.87% increase for overall, all of our personnel. We are adding a halftime equivalent uh, position to it already a half time that would be now making it full time. It's a half time janitorial position. And now with the oncoming Uptown Social at the Senior Center, the, the idea is that this half time person that was primarily helping at City Hall, and we've had trouble filling a half time janitorial yeah. position. Mm -hmm. So it was really just vacant for this whole past year. By having this person alternate between City Hall and the Uptown Social, with that requirement, now we make it full time. There's full time work between the two, so they're going to alternate between the two facilities. That's that's the plan at this point. So that's that's reflected in with the the uh, the budget. 
you know, overall, there's a, there is a decrease from 2022 to the 2023 proposed um, budget, uh, just a very, very slight decrease. And if you see that, that's, we're looking at uh, roughly from, you know, 5.8 million back in 2022 to about 5.7. So a little, little, almost about a percent and a half. The, the decrease, these decreases, but they also, we're also absorbing some increases. Natural gas, for instance, utilities um, and inflation, some of those factors that are also included, they're built into the budget. So overall, we're very proud of, of the fact that there's some automatic increases that we had to build in given the utilities as well as there's we have several we have several contracts that have automatic escalators for consumer price entries one one large one would be our garbage uh, and sanitation so with that every year it's a five-year contract that we enter into for handling and disposing of our waste at the landfill that automatically has whatever the consumer price index but it's capped, so it's maxed at 5%. So one thing is, you know, looking at some of the consumer price indexes, I've seen anywhere from seven to 8%, uh, we're, we're not gonna realize that in these contracts, they're gonna be held at a max of 5%. So what's included in, in just the, the public works? Well, yeah, that would include the administration, the engineering division, streets and sanitation, Parks are also included. The buildings and facilities and traffic are all within this combined first memo page here budget. So there's 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 a lot of new, I wouldn't say new activities, but consolidation with the accounts that we've worked on and, and through finance department and Caitlin's effort, we've reduced, we've gone from Throughout my career, I think we had 45 different cost centers for the department that we had to manage. And I think we're getting down to less, I think we're down less than a dozen now. So we're, we're making great progress. We're, we're, finally, we're finally using the technology at our disposal to manage properly, which is a good thing. So um, it, the only thing is for an old, old guy like me that had all that past history and all these then I, I kind of got to figure it all out again. So well, <laughs> that's all right. You're a quick learner. I try. I try. But I, as I said, I, overall, uh, we're in a good position. Uh, we're holding the line. We know um, as we've had the presentations from the city administrator and Caitlin, as well as our consultant Ehlers about the you know strategic fiscal plan that you know the city is going to have challenges moving forward. And we recognize that as a department. And so part of our jobs are to see how we can continue to operate and keeping things moving forward, but keeping them at, at a flat level. It's a challenge. So uh, just being honest, so although the budget remains flat and we're holding the line, it may mean a little less opportunity to do work because of our purchasing power. We're not maybe gonna be able to buy as much concrete. If the concrete, budget stays the same from year to year and prices are increases, it, it basically means we have less to purchase. So then that's less opportunity to do repairs and work. Overall, we've been able to do some things through efficiencies and gain some 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 workflows. So we're not in we're still doing making progress on those improvements and we're confident that we're going to continue making those improvements in terms of our overall quality of life in our infrastructure. So we're confident in that in that respect. It's a balancing act. You know, if we don't invest in the operations and we keep it flat, well then maybe then we need to look at our capital improvements and maybe use some debt financing for larger improvements that make a larger difference. So we'll work with finance. We talk about this, um, this is not uncommon. Any questions about the operations of the main, what I would say the main public works? Yes. I have a question. Um, 
like things like golf and things like that, that go from year to year. Like, like last year, you didn't have quite as bad of a year for self. Are you able to carry some of that over, or how does that? Are we able to carry some of that that money's over? Because this next year we have this bad year or something. We 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 did we did carry over the money. The money goes back to the general fund okay. and fund balance. Yeah. But because about 10 years ago we invested in a larger salt storage okay we're able we're, we're full okay so we Good. used it the difficulty with salt is is the winter season it spans two two fiscal years you know winter starts now in 2022 so we still have 2022's budget for salt but then it goes into 2023 after january so it's a little goofy but we're able to like last winter it wasn't too bad we were able to take our full, we're approximately, I'd say about 2,200 tons that we have in our salt storage and it's pretty maxed out. Okay. So that helps us that maybe in 2023, we won't have to purchase all of, we have a, the, the difficulty with the salt is because we buy it through the state contract, we have to guarantee the state a, a minimum amount that we borrow, or we, that we purchase, excuse okay. me, from the state. Then what happens is if you have, let's say, a light year, you're still obligated to buy the minimum amount. So we it's a it's a real fine line because if you do have a bad winter and you don't order enough, then you pay a premium if you try to buy more after your your basic minimal allotment. Then the price goes up because they try to purchase bulk for the entire year. So it's we try to keep it as flat as possible. The best thing is with the salt storage facility now, we have a capacity to buffer those swings. Long answer for it, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's a little, it's, it's complicated in, in, the, in terms of the contract with the salt. Okay, same thing with all fuel is a different thing because we don't have fuel, but fuel is other, fuel is the big thing that I think we just talked about in the, in getting, you know, in the license and hearing with, right. with the police and fire department, so. Yep, and we purchase fuel um, on a monthly basis. We looked at doing locking in for a full year, but um, we, since we have a, the distribution in the fuel dock is fairly close in, in Milwaukee, okay. we get pretty good competitive purchasing on a, on, a, on a monthly basis versus bulk purchase for the entire year for diesel and gasoline. Thank you. Thank you. I also had a, a mark by sand and salt. I remember previous years when we used to buy it and then we either used it or we didn't have. Is there another alternative method that you're using besides this that's not that's not in here? Well, it's 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 included in there in the fact that we're going to more liquid. Right. So it's part of that budget. And what we've been doing is trying to reduce the amount of tonnage year by year by year and use less salt and more of a liquid app application. And the liquid application is, is far superior to the, the salt. It's, let's, uh, let's put it this way, it's, it's more effective in terms of preventing the bonding early on. Now, during an operation, it starts to get heavier. You're, you're always gonna have to use some rock salt. Right. But the liquid is uh, much more effective in earlier right. prevention as well as it buys us time. If we pre-wet pre and pre-apply right. the, the, the liquid, that biz gives us time to respond. It doesn't get as slippery right away. And uh, it also saves on the amount that we have to treat after the event starts right. as well. And it's also better for our streets. Well, it's better for streets and, and, and the environment. I mean, it, the yeah. DNR is also, because uh -huh. all of this en ends up in our waterways somewhere. Right. So again, just because I've been around so long, I remember when we first started using that, and that there was a big question on whether it worked, it didn't work, all this stuff. I'm glad to see you. But your 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 the amount of gasoline or the cost of gasoline is not in your estimate. Where is that? It's in our motor vehicle budget. That's oh. that's coming up. Gotcha. Yeah, that's another. That's it. That's it. That's the internal service fund that we have. That's not this. The general fund budget is mainly finance through the general fund and our tax levy. We do get transportation aids, there's other revenue sources that come into this at all, but this this is the main general fund budget. Anyone have 
Any other questions any other about? Questions? Moving on, let's go to the next one. <laughs> Arbor Santa Marina. Again, it's a separate portion of our budget. It's um, what we call as a special revenue fund that in, in and of itself, it should be self-sufficient. Basically, in other words, the revenues earned at the marina should pay for the marina. For the most part, for operations, that's true. But if you go down to the bottom of the page, we still have debt. And that's the big, the big concern with the marina long term. The marina is now 25 years old and we're still paying off debt from the original construction. It never really uh, was built to the very beginning model that said, you know, if we build all of these slips and we fill all these slips, we're going to have all this revenue and we'll be able to pay off the debt in addition to the operations. It wasn't built that way is what you're saying. Correct. Okay. Because the challenge was it was even difficult to fill even at the capacity that it was built. So there was really never a demand to justify adding more capital costs to expand the marina because you can't even pay off the existing uh, debt. Mm -hmm. But are we putting like a bunch of energy and money towards this in the next few years? We are studying that and that's going to be looked at. And I would say that's going to be a, a subject of debate and discussion that will be brought before you. I think there's some opportunities to, with the study that we're looking at, is reconfiguring things, make it more robust, but also potentially smaller and um, less costly. So I think there's going to be some scenarios for leadership in the, in the Common Council to make a decision long term. What does that future look like? It's not just what we have today is going to be fixed and we're going to, and we're just going to continue along the same path. It's got to be a different path because we know the last 25 years on this current path, it's not it's not sustainable. Right. So you're overseeing the budget as F2, what are they? F2 and F3. F3, there we go. Yes. Do they report to you? Yes. They're a they're a contractor. Mm -hmm. I mean, what we call they're kind of like a fee-based operator. So they they're hired to manage the marina on behalf of the city. Right. So they're under contract. Next year's the last year of their five-year contract, and it's up for renewal at the end of next year. And that goes through public works. You sign that, you oversee it. Yes. Okay. It's interesting. So then that will that will be something that will also be discussed next year. Not only the capital improvements that are needed at the marina, but also what are we going to do about the future management? And there's some options there as well. What, what is the current debt left on? Do you know what that current debt is on? I don't know if I, if I read this, it looks right. like it's. Uh, <clears throat> oh, you know what? I I haven't I haven't done that other document. Okay. Caitlin, do you, you you want me to grab it or can you just pull it up real quick? Just a quick kind of a curiosity. I wanted to say it was like two million. Two million still after 25 years. Yeah, there's an interesting How much did we pay? um well and there's interesting agreements that were out there. Um we owe the county, I think a million dollars. Um, but it was contingent on the marina making money. So it's kind of just hanging out there because it never really has. Um I, I'm getting into, but then we also owe the SCEDC. Mm -hmm. I'm not 250. Is that right? I, yeah, I want to say 250 or 300. So right was away. everybody went in to help with the beginning development of it? Correct. Is the same organization down that runs Kenosha and the other marina? Is, are they, is that the same group that we have? F3, I believe, runs receipts. Yeah. Machine, okay. not, 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 not Kenosha. Okay, I, I just, uh, they are, yeah. So F3 does run several along right. the Lakeshore. Yeah. Uh, Skipper Buds is in the area. Yeah. They, they used to run right. a marina prior to this, uh, and there's others. Yeah. Some, some, you know, in, in like Port Washington and others um, run a municipal with their municipal, mm -hmm. municipal staff. Right. So I think there, there's, there's opportunities to be explored 
next year when all that information comes up. Yeah, the um, marina is currently at a $2.02 million deficit. Mm -hmm. I forgot the O2. Can I, can I ask? Well, the pos plus a possible extra million. To the that would be included. Well, that's included yes, because we have to report that that debt is outstanding. Maybe we could, as part of this new reconfiguration, get a new deal with the county to maybe. Maybe okay. just write that write off. off. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. Well, that's after the 25 I, years they got that's it. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get out. Balance you know. And how much was it, Mr. Evans? Ooh, that I don't know. Oh. That would be a little. Yeah, I want. I want to say. I don't need that right now, but I will eventually. Want to I. I yeah. I'm putting that together. We're going to be. Right. Doing, we're going to be doing a presentation of kind of the history mm -hmm. of how it was developed, what were the costs, how it was structured, where we've been, some all the improvements, <laughs> all the costs that we've had over the years to where we are today, mm -hmm. and then now with the new study where we're going. So kind of a past, present, future. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's my question about this, that, because my takeaway from the, the study conversation that we had, however, long ago, was that the reason why we lost money on the marina was because we lost those large slips. And, and so we're doing this study, you know, to how to, you know, maybe replace those in order to get more revenue on that. But now I just hear, I heard you say that maybe there's potential of making the marina smaller because, you know, so I'm just confused there. <laughs> Smaller in terms of overall number of slips, but maybe larger slips that are generate more revenue. Mm -hmm. So they have different size slips. The larger the boats, the larger the slips, the more money that's brought in. Sure. That's what that and you're right. That's what were lost this past season with the damage to them. They weren't be able to replace. Mm -hmm. So we've lost some of the larger vessels. So with that loss, the larger revenue went away as well. So that's some of the stuff in terms of the model and how it could be structured is that instead of having, let's say, 200 slips that we currently have, mm -hmm. maybe it's 150, but there are much larger slips. And that 150 now generates even more revenue than the 200, but it takes less uh, less staffing, less less maintenance, you know, less infrastructure because it's smaller. And that should be the result of this. Well, that's what we're that's what we're studying. That's what we're looking. Okay, so we can stop bleeding that money. <laughs> that's the, that's 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 going to be the that's, yeah, okay. that's the, going to be the decision. Outside of the slips itself, will they be reviewing the amenities that are like the building itself, the way it's based yes. out, how it's being rented, yep. the operations of that? Will come through that study as well. There's an there's you know the part well, part of the whole model and the infrastructure is not just slips. It's the amenities. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, there's and, a whole pool, there's bathrooms, there's showers, yeah. they just remodeled, like there's a lot of money that's getting put, put into that. There for has 150 been. people to use. Noted. All right. Can we move on? I think we're done with the crew. Oh, right. the Marina questions are done. Well, okay. For now. For now. <laughs> yes. That will be a whole. That will probably be coming back. Like I said, as a whole, that'll be a probably just the agenda item one evening. We have more data to present. Okay. Next would be the motor vehicle fund, and I kind of mentioned this earlier. Uh, it, the that it's that it's an enterprise fund, internal service fund. So what does that mean? What it means is in our operations budget that we discussed earlier, there's a line item for different activities in different areas. I call them cost centers, but again, call consolidating, such as the parks, streets, department, snow plowing, those activities. There's actually a line item called motor vehicles and equipment, and it's an internal charge that we charge our departments. That money, then goes to the motor vehicle fund where, where Rick is in charge of, and his operation is to acquire equipment, make sure the equipment is operating, it's fueled and ready to go. So the money that we charge to those departments comes to the motor vehicle fund, uses it to fix, maintain, and so forth, as well as acquire new equipment. All with the idea is that we, we don't compete with capital improvements fund so we, we want to have this as a self-sustaining fund where we're earning revenues and enough cash coming in from those other operations 
that comes to this department, we can cover our operations internally with our mechanics and our fuel and our maintenance and equipment. And then as well as have enough cash to over the years, systematically replace capital equipment. So we're, if you recall, some of you that have been on the council for a long time, this fund was really flush. You got it. And we were able to do it with no problems whatsoever. Well, there were some decisions much in between that weren't part of this leadership at all that decided to use that money for other purposes. Since then, we've been, sometimes we've been competing with capital improvements over the years to acquire. Lately, we've been pulling that out of capital improvements and trying to keep our capital purchases for equipment at a lower level. One thing has helped, if you recall, we just leased a large portion of our fleet, are basically our pickup trucks and light duty pieces of equipment. So that is now being leased. So that is actually a charge in this um, budget where in fact, in the past, that would have been, again, a capital acquisition. So uh, real quickly, if you go under gasoline, you know, we're up probably about 55,000 we're looking at next year. It's not too bad again, because we're able to get, you know, we, we don't pay at the pump what you pay at the pump. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so we're able to buy at, at competitive rates wholesale, and then we charge wholesale. We also, some of our equipment doesn't pay the motor vehicle fuel tax because it's off road. So like our mowers and some of our heavier equipment that doesn't necessarily drive over the road. So we don't pay the, the, the fuel tax that goes to fund the road system and other on that on those pieces of equipment. Sure. Uh, and again, my, my question would be there there aren't there's not going to be any type of a reduced in services, leaf pickup, all these other things that we do that consume the fuel that we might not go out that one day because we're, Wait, we're I'm hoping we have a mild winter right, exactly. because then we don't exactly that will burn fuel. A plowing operation is just you just watch watch. Okay, and then, and then my my other question is uh, being back when that that fund was had a lot of money and then people were asking how did that fund get all that money and because we never spent it. Okay, and everybody's right. sitting there and everybody said, hey, how come we're using that? We're doing but is this model the same model that we had before it is used by other communities to be reimbursed themselves? Yeah. I think we were, the last time we talked about, again, years ago, Green Bay had this? Yes. Okay, so Man, this is a, so this this is is a, that's a pretty good standard model. The, the, the one thing that I, I would say we slightly changed is instead of going to hourly charges and tracking right. it per yeah. every piece yeah. of equipment, we went to a, like a monthly charge. Okay. Here we are, and because I'm quite frankly, we had someone just entering and checking the time vehicle and entry. That's all they were doing is reconciling all these cards to make sure that our vehicle times were matching up with the employee times. And mm -hmm. uh, now it's just a flat rate. Gotcha. But it is it's still the same model. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Caitlin, we've, the last couple of years, we've actually added to the net fund balance. So it's going, it's going in the right direction, even with cap. So we're, we're not taking out more money from the fund than we're replacing. It's actually starting to grow again. Yeah. Thank you. Like, that's what I saw. Thought I read. That's why I asked. I'm impressed you read it already. <laughs> All right. Done. Let's go to the recycling fund. Again, this is the newer fund. And again, it's kind of like an internal service fund or special revenue fund. So this is now when we went to the automated garbage and recycling cart system to help pay for it and get it, we decided that we're gonna impose a recycling fee on top of the garbage fee. It was one of the few fees that was left that the city could implement without negative is affecting then the general fund by having to take that out of the general fund so we purchased two trucks specifically for recycling out of this fund and we have about two and a half roughly three full-time equivalents that are charged out of this 
Did they use full time equivalent yeah. for, for for just the recycling? So if staff, yeah, staff. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So we have we every day we'll have four garbage. Yeah. And then we'll have two recycling. Okay. And again, um, it, the start, when we started this fund, it had we had a, a, a grant of around over two hundred some thousand dollars, two hundred sixty thousand to help pay for the carts initially. There's some. Uh, lease payments because we when we acquire the carts very expensive. I think the overall both the garbage and recycling carts totally was around two million dollars just to buy carts. And again, it's thirty six thousand carts we had to distribute throughout the community. There's a lease on that. And I, is that ten year lease? I believe so. That's what I thought. Um, so that's that's reflected in here the recycling portion of that garbages operations. Um, again, you'll see a line item in here, motor vehicle charges. We charge this account for the motor vehicle that goes back, then to Rick's account and so forth as part of that internal service. Again, overall, it's, re it's remaining flat, little increase in the cost, but the revenues, we didn't adjust the recycling fee, it's still at $4. And I think we'll be able to go stay at $4. I think the projection is maybe for another two years. And then in two years, when that's up, I think in 2025, I want to say we may have to take a consideration to see if it needs to be adjusted at that point, just because of cost escalating and so forth. Good question. On the, on the, the carts now, are those, were those the least all ones? Are those going to be ours then after 10 after years? After 10 years, 10 yes. Years. Okay. Yes. That's what I thought. Yep. And, you know, surprisingly, um, the, they, they, well, and, and that's partly why when we, we, we went with this vendor, they have a very good track record and there's communities in some cases they've, they've gotten 15, even 20 years. Yeah, you get some of their cracked or broke here and there and you yeah. have to replace periodic yeah. here and there, but um, so far so good. Can you, can you briefly speak to what happened between 20... 2020, 2021, and now with the um, contracted services going from like eleven thousand to sixty thousand dollars. I'm just curious what that is. With the the main portion of the contracted service is is when we went to the fee, the four dollars mm -hmm. per month that goes on the that goes on the water bill. Uh -huh. So then the water utility now charges us to put that on their bill. Gotcha. So that's why it jumped. We didn't re we didn't have the fee in really 2020. It started in in 2021 and it was phased in. We because we were rolling it out in 2021 and then it fully hit in 2022. Yeah. Remember the last meeting we talked the water bill isn't really the water bill <laughs> and saw the other things. Okay, thank you. All right. Any other questions on recycling? If not, I'm going to stormwater utility. This is a very, very small portion of the budget. We did have at one time a stormwater utility that actually collected a fee throughout the community, but that was suspended. But the, the fund itself remains. So it, it is, it is again, like a, a special revenue fund. And the main, mainly the only fee is you're, we're collecting is erosion control and some stormwater fees through engineering when there's developments we charge a fee for inspection and review of the plans. I got a question for you. Yeah. If we went back to the the original fee, yeah. I remember when it was when we took it out. Yes. What was the what was the amount of income that we were getting from that? We we're roughly almost just about 1.1 million. Okay. Was what I want to say overall. It, it the, the fee was three dollars a month per household for if you had a single family house it was three dollars a month that went on your water bill as well so it was nine dollars a quarter and however if you were a, a commercial unit or a nonprofit or um, a business if you weren't zoned or classified as residential or a two-family then what happened is there was a fee based on your actual what we call impervious area. In other words, we, we actually measured every property's rooftop and parking lot, hard surface, and there was a square foot charge. 
the square foot charge was basically a, a residential unit was right around, I want to say, 2,300 square feet of impervious area. That was kind of the standard. So for every, if you had a business and you had 23,000 square feet of parking lot and rooftop, you'd pay 10 times that amount. That was the theory. So they were paying $30 a month or $90 a quarter because the theory is the more parking lot and rooftop that you have, when it rains, it runs off faster. You need larger storm sewers. It, it sends pollutants to the system that much faster. So that's how it was calculated. And uh, many, very common throughout the state of Wisconsin, I think, Ryan, correct me wrong. There's got to be 60 communities now that have stormwater utilities. Yeah, I think I think definitely every city's got it. Maybe, yeah, any kind of major I think we're we're like be. we're like the only city in, right. in the state now that is our size that doesn't have it. A stormwater fee. Okay. So then, like what? Like now we're we're doing like the work on on uh, the one over on um, over on uh, 29th Street, the the large right. one. But so what's paying, paying for that? Where are we getting that money from? The pond, David, dry pond. The pond. Yeah. Dry pond. We're going to take it around to capital improvements. See, so now that's, right. I mean, that's where this should come out of. Oh, that's, that, that, you know, that's something that, again, is going to be, we're going to have to have a debate at some point, or not a debate, but an idea or a discussion of how do we want to structure this. Now, in, in hindsight, mm -hmm. you, you look, if we would have kept it, we would have been able to build up funds to fund a capital improvement without the need to go to borrowing. Okay. So, in, 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 and that, that's the concept behind it because we have a lot of infrastructure that needs to be maintained. And right now we're doing it all through the general fund, which we know is very difficult to do anything out of because of net new construction and expenditure restraints and so forth at the state level. So, that's that's the kind of stuff, uh, you know. The difficulty now is if we would implement it, it would result in probably about a million, two million five, roughly, let's say, that would come out of the general fund. But if we do that, the state now says you have to cut your general fund by that amount. So there's really no benefit to do it. So that's that's the dilemma now. Unless we're able to have some legislatures say, you know, Sheboygan, you had one back in 04 and 05. We recognize that. You know, that was before all this changed. We can write legislation that we would not penalize the city and let you do it. That's the only way I think we, it would be beneficial for the city to pursue it. Because right now, it, it, it actually is. It, I think Caitlin would agree. Maybe, you know, if, I think that's the biggest dilemma that we're facing is, we take it out and we create a fee, then how do we, we it, it, there's no benefit. It, it doesn't allow us to use those, all that general fund to expand other services that we all, we know, we know as a community, we could use elsewhere. You know, you know more street improvement, and more and police and fire, more library, all those good things you hear about all the time. Uh, that fee, um, that brought in all nonprofit. Churches. Yep, that's, and, that was, it, it was, yeah. and I, I remember being there yeah. and uh, kind of on the fence because this yeah. was probably one of the only fees that was more equitable for the entire city right. to get. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the trouble was was the management of some of those funds at that time. Yeah. Yeah. No. It was questionable. <laughs> yeah. questionable and that's why. It, yeah. Uh, the one thing is it, if when you, when we did the analysis of non-taxable property in the city of Sheboygan. When you look at a map and you start color coding all the property that doesn't pay taxes, property taxes in other words, it's a lot. Churches and nonprofit. Now, there's a lot of good that they provide to the community. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, but it also then though is provides a disproportionate burden on the taxpayer to fund the rest of the services, then we're all paying for it. So the, if there could be a, ba a better balance, and that's what the stormwater utility right. provided was, it was a nice balance and it was fair and equitable to those 
properties that are are, are adding to the burden, the costs. In other words. Yes, but that was also an expense that went away from those people that they didn't have to pay any longer. So if you bring that expense back, they're going to say, hey, what are you doing? Right. We haven't paid this for eight, 10 years. That's 15 right. years. So. But why was it taken out? When the, 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 when the main reason it was it, it was a political and it was a campaign promise. Okay. I think there was some things that again there was there was it early on in some of the administrations that was in place at the time was looking at the fund and, and, and using it in in ways probably that could have been more could have been more. I'll talk to you later, buddy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Can you record it? Is that it you need to? <laughs> <laughs> I, you, know, I, you can start your own little podcast. I think, well, I think there's a the history of coming yeah, yeah. well, they're, they're, Part of it is, is it really never had a chance to fully get established. That was part of the thing. So a lot of it went all to operations with the premise that it's going to go, a lot of it was going to go to capital. Well, it never got to the point where it built up enough revenue and equity to actually get to the capital side. It was. It, I, it lasted two, two and a half years, two years, I think. Oh, yeah. Okay. Moving. All right, moving on. Last but not least, and one of the most important aspects of our department is clean water. Our wastewater treatment plant. Very large portion of our budget. Again, special revenue fund that um, comprises Basically, this is all financed through the wastewater rates. And over the years, there's been a real concerted effort to smooth the rates uh, because uh, I would say prior to the last five years, we've had a lot of peaks and valleys where rates went up 10% one year, but then the next year they were 1%. Then they're up again another 9%. What we're trying to do with the budget is have you know an even anywhere from two to three to four percent increase with wastewater and that provides us enough capacity covers all of our operations but it gives us also the ability to raise enough revenue to finance capital improvements without the need to go to capital borrowing or general fund uh, excuse me general obligation borrowing or long-term borrowing um, such as the Clean Water Fund, um, can get great rates, and there's some principal forgiveness with the Clean Water Fund, but the terms are 20 years and sometimes even longer. And that's not always the best thing to lock into such long terms for for your capital. So, uh, Jordan, our newest wastewater treatment plant superintendent, uh, worked on this as well. Uh, and he's doing a great job coming into the department, taking on from uh, Steve in the past. And you know, some of the goals, you know, we 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 want to continue to maintain our environmental compliance below regulatory requirements. We want to do it and operate it in a fiscally sound man manner. We're constantly continuing to recruit and develop and adjust our personnel. And I think uh, we're experiencing that right now. As a matter of fact, we had a recent retirement. Uh, we had a recent a uh, new operator being onboarded, and um, it's a, it's 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 not only at the wastewater treatment, but I think all of our our staff here, from from Mike's area and buildings and facilities and traffic to Joel in Parks and Forestry to Joel uh, coming on board recently as our new superintendent of streets and and, and sanitation. We you know we have about four four and a half uh, and a four and a half four positions right now vacant just in streets that we're trying to recruit from the outside. So it's an apartment wide issue that we're facing. Uh, one of the things we have is the wastewater treatment plant also serves not just the city of Sheboygan, but our outlying area, the regional plant. We own and operate it, but we serve the outlying areas via contract. So the village of Kohler's sewage comes to us, Sheboygan Falls, town of Sheboygan, town of Wilson, and when they have contracts that we take from them to, to take their sewage and treat it for them. As well as, um, so we, the other thing is, one of the differences that's also included in now this consolidated budget is Joel's area or streets and sanitation. 
Public Works is responsible for the collection system. So all the pipes and the manholes and all that system, that's an operation of the Public Works Department and the crews here. So that's not necessarily at the plant. But it's part of the wastewater rates and that activity and that cost is included in here. Right, as well as every year we develop a, a five-year uh, plan. So overall, again, uh, increase with our personnel with uh, wages and benefits uh, for next year. Looking at that, um, you know, it's using pretty much the same staffing. We are looking to uh, do some department uh, table of organizational changes at the plant for some succession. We have some retirements coming up, so we want to get the position uh, positions in place so that we're able to absorb those retirements and have staff that are trained and ready to take on their, their next role in, in that in that capacity. Um, I'm looking for other highlights. Uh, the big thing is the water utility. Um, again, this is how we fund the wastewater rates is that the rates get put on the water bill. It's a huge part of the budget. Um, because the, the rationale is we use their water meters to calculate the sewer rates. So they're able to charge us 50% of all their costs for the water meters themselves, as well as the personnel to read the meters and so forth. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just look at Jordan. I, I wanna say it's like 650,000 or is it over 700,000 now? It's more than that now, yeah. Yeah. We pay about 60,000 a month and then they're gonna raise that by about 9% for next year. So it's, it's a huge number. I'll, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but overall, again, it, it, the, 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 the operations of the plant is remaining flat. Uh, we, you know, we, we, the big thing we, that we show is, you know, we have a big capital uh, expenditure coming up. We have that Lakeshore Interceptor that we've talked about that is going to be protected and, and eventually rehabbed. So that's about anywhere from a $10 million to $11 million project that we're showing, but we are also anticipating some grants coming in to offset that. So, you know, questions about wastewater. Chemical charges are probably the, the another area that is fluctuating quite a bit with, with uh, the economy and supply chain issues. So that's another area that I know Jordan and his staff have been trying to tackle and look for alternatives, but it's 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 a fairly specialized area in terms of suppliers, in terms of it's limited in terms of what we can get out there in the market for some of that stuff. That's not something the state uh, Interest into that? No, because the state doesn't have wastewater treatment plants. They have <laughs> they have highways. <laughs> but maybe we could, you know, start selling them some. You know, <laughs> that's the public works budget in in a brief. And I, I appreciate everyone's attention and good questions. And always here to, you know answer any questions or if you want further details, give us a call. We're happy to work with you and sit down with you and go over stuff. And again, it's only for discussion only, so you don't even have to make a motion except to adjourn. Don't forget, don't forget that motion. Well, there any other questions on the, on the budget? All right, then we're looking for a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Next meeting date is October 25th. Thank you, Thank you everyone.